First of all, thanks for surviving DPP marathon. I mean, <laughs> the level of oxygen is such that I'm not sure that your brain uh, functions 100%, but the idea today, as you saw, the whole design of the, of the conference was to give, to paint the canvas of what is happening. We do not expect you to grab everything. That's why we will prepare, and Sirpas is put on their website, everything that was said today, including the audiovisual, and the Q&A, including the answers to the 200, 300 questions posed while we were talking. I wanted to thank you all for having 34 speakers and being two minutes early. Can you imagine? I've never seen that. <laughs> 32 speakers passed so far, and we are on time. So, so first, thanks to you, and my question is, did you find it useful? Have you? Anybody who has a suggestion how to do it better, because we will do another one. <laughs> I'll tell you when. But we will do another marathon like that, this time organized by the Commission. So anything you have as a good constructive, <laughs> constructive suggestions are welcome, okay? Maybe a floor ventilation? Yes. <laughs> uh, a room with air. Those that we know are a coffee. <laughs> quality of coffee, food, and, and air, okay? <laughs> so, having said that, I wanted to thank, very special thanks to Sirpa's project. Uh, you exceeded our expectations. So this is one of my best projects I ever had. So, thanks. <laughs> Many thanks to Prague Information 4.0 and uh, Battery Passport Consortia. I mean, there were some overlaps, I know, but your funders should be proud of you as well. Huh? <laughs> so whoever funds you, that is UBA, I guess, uh, and uh, some ministry in Germany, should also be proud. <laughs> so, and I, if I can extend that, you know, don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, what I would like to say here is that whatever you've heard, is a lot of good ideas and suggestions that we as a commission will take into account, but this is not it, okay? We have a very official mechanisms that will take all these suggestions on board, and hopefully all these mechanisms will, will start already from the third step, they will not repeat what you've done, that will lead to the official decisions and clarities that you ask for. So thanks for providing this valuable input because that will accelerate, hopefully, and we will take it seriously into account whatever you propose. There are some suggestions that I can already tell you that will be difficult to take on board. Your research points to some valuable information in electronics, like 70 data points that are really good and useful for DPP. Forget that. <laughs> DPP will not have 70 mandated information points or 60 for textiles. So how are we going to choose them? Well, it's just practically, legally, maybe politically impossible to go into, you know, this kind of lists and lists of mandated data. We will not be able to do that. Andreas, the fines you want commission to issue, you will not issue fines. I mean, the, the both fines will be member states. Okay, so it's there's be a little bit of that, and just on the centralized, decentralized, it's decentralized. If anybody asks you, say decentralized, because even the web portal will point to decentralized data. It's not that we will ever cache any data. Okay, so the only thing is registry, and I will tell you, and I'll point to my tax suit colleagues why that registry is there and how we developed it. So some of these suggestions we already know will be not possible, okay? So we have to, you have to live with it. So. Uh, because you, it's a lot of sweat and tears behind all those suggestions and research projects. So let me take a, before I tell you what's coming up, and I will do a chronological order, let me introduce you team members that you have not seen yet. So you have seen William, he's the original DPP Musketeer. You have seen Michele. Behind William, there are other two colleagues that are now joining the DPP team, so Wojtek and Caroline. There is Michele, and he has a whole team behind him in DG Grow. <laughs> we have Connect, and Thomas is joining me, and he's actually from Uber, uh, from Germany, uh, joining me to work on DPP. 
and that's DigiConnect. We have also DigiTaxSuit, and we have Marco Marsili and Panayota Stathopoulou, but she is not here. Marco, now that you were actually one of the DGs that didn't present, if you want to say a word, just to introduce yourself and say something from DigiTaxu that you would like to raise. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a few words. Uh, there are uh, not so many time uh, to uh, um, explain all what is the word behind Taxud. But however, uh, uh, the key point for us is uh, that uh, um, there is the EU uh, single window environment for custom. This is the regulation. Uh, regulation for um, the, the the single window, uh, the single window meaning the possibility for uh, customs to uh, have a direct access to all the um, other partner uh, DG uh, system database, and uh, in future you see the DPP. But uh, uh, the system behind the uh, EU uh, single window environment for custom is, uh, as, uh, is established in the regulation is the EU Castle single window certex uh, that is a central middleware developed by the commission to enable all the uh, exchange a verification of the information uh, provided for the custom purposes uh, in respect of what is the data uh, in the uh, partner competent authority regarding any of prohibition and restriction document like certificates, license, authorization, permits. And uh, this connection uh, is established because, uh, uh, as I said, custom single window CERTEC is already a system, a central system that is working now, right now together with uh, uh, in verifying uh, some of these prohibition and restriction in respect of other DG. And uh, what is the keyword of this uh, verification that is possible via this uh, uh, central system called, as I said, Castle Single Window Certex, is an automatic, automatic uh, verification. So this is the keyword for you. What are the castle control? Are not controlled by human, but just the system. Thanks to this module, the possibility to verify the information in respect of the uh, related database. In this, in the, uh, in this environment, the database is the DPP central registry. All the information that are there, there are few information, but relevant for custom. And you uh, have seen that uh, this unique registration identification number assigned to the information related to the DPP and for custom, the commodity code are the minimum requirement to be uh, verified by customs to uh, uh, match the information that are contained into the custom declaration and the information that are on the DPP registry. This is the role of customs. This activity is done automatically without any human intervention. And this is the role of customs in all of this. So thanks to all. It's a great pleasure for me and for all the custom colleagues that work on this file to be part of the DPP and ESPR team. Thanks. Thank you, Marco. We have Digit, 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 so Joao was already in the panel. He's underplaying his importance. <laughs> they are very important in what will happen in the DPP. And he, next to him is uh, Jose Manuel Panino Plaza, who is working with him in Digit, Digit. And of course, nothing would be possible without Hadea's support and Fanny that is there in the corner. That is the project <laughs> helping helping us manage all these projects, including the next one, which I'll mention later. Now, a reflection of the day, very quick reflections before we go to the important things like dates and uh, next steps. One thing is clear, that I, I heard it very clearly, you need more money. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a several calls for money, and non-surprisingly, researchers ask for research, lawyers for legal clarity, Standardization experts for clear, stable standards. 
all that is fine and it's understandable, implementation support. But as I said, what we will need to do better is to bring the operators to actually start owning it, understanding it, and walking imaginary through it and helping us to really design things. And that's why the SIRPAS 2, and I'll mention that later. So yes, there is a need for clarity on technical, regulatory, and legal. And we're working on it, and that's why you see seven DGs, and there are another two DGs that are coming later on top of this trying to scratch our heads around it. Uh, so two priorities, money and legal clarity. And the third priority is that commission takes care of those other two first priorities, right? So this is very clear. So we have a lot of, of take-home messages that we I will digest and we will discuss internally with all my colleagues. What I have seen is that there was kind of a random walk about what is DPP about. I don't know if you know the tale of the six blind people touch, uh, discussing elephant. Everybody has a view, whatever, you know, so six blind people touch an elephant. Somebody touched the, you know, the nose, somebody touched the tusk, somebody the tail, somebody the leg, or the rear. And they have one experience, and they were sure that this is their truth. Uh, so. The consumers see their truths, the standardization people see their truths, the operators and the DPP service providers see their truth, and the regulator and the lawyers see their truth. It's all true, but it's such a beast that all these are full truths, but I don't think anybody in the world has yet the full integrated picture how exactly it will work. We need you still on this to work together, to work with, with us together on this one. Now, if Everybody has a little truth, but there is one thing I want to, and why I'm saying this, is there is one attribute of DPP that is more equal than others. And that is that DPP is a tool for transition to circular economy, in particular to business, circular and sustainable business model. So if anything else stands out, so the North Star is that DPP is a tool. So it's good for reporting, of course, and good for consumer information, and good for compliance, which compliance is kind of a part of it, so it's the basic pillar of YDPP, but it's the North Star is circular economy, and that's the first slide of William. Never forget, it. when you get completely confused, come back to the basic, it's about circularity, sustainability, and that will actually decide what DPP data will be included in. So when we reach the limit, we come back to the priority number one, which is circularity. So just reminder of the first slide that you saw the day. Things will get worse before they get better. So we, you will get more confused as we go and disappointed because some political decision, legal resource decisions. So be ready. It's like every curve of anything that we do that is innovative. There is a big hype, a lot of expectations. There is kind of a disillusionment. So oh, it's going to be so simple and it's not as fancy as I thought. But then it really takes off. Huh? And we hope that we will see it in our lifetime. So <laughs> we hope that this taking off will happen b really big time before 2040, OK? But don't expect that things will completely revolutionize in the next three years. Huh? So that's important that we are, you are patient and you are with us on this. Now, on the next steps, very quickly. So 1st of May, we have a launch of SIRPAS 2. So congratulations to the SIRPAS 2. We had, we had very good proposals. It was close. So if anybody represents some of the proposals that didn't make it, congratulations anyway, it was really good. So it was played, you know, on details. SIRPAS 2 will be the demonstrator at large scale, what, whatever the large scale and real time means, because we will, within four years, you cannot reach an end of life of project to see what the experience is. So there'll be a lot of kind of simulation, but we hope that at least whatever you can do within four years on a real life, you give us insight that we could not find out by discussing things in room. So this is the time where the economic actors have their way to say an input, give us an input. So this is a very important step that we still didn't have. What the reality is really telling us about all these good ideas that we just discussed. Okay, so SIRPAS 2 will have 13 demonstrators, six on textiles, including mattress, one of them, five on electronics, one on tires, one on construction material. So there will be a lot of input that I hope will benefit and we will be able to see everybody. I have one request, and I already discussed with some of you, 
that Zero Pass 2 also links to UNTP. So what the Steve from Australia government and well, it's a company as well in Australia was talking about that we actually start internationalizing this discussion as well. Yeah. And so we take international players with us on the road because if they are part of it, they will own it better than if we tell them this is it, you know. And we surprise them with the final product. So that's important for Sirpas. I know that's not really in the plan, but we hope that some players find it useful that either as a demonstrator or as a horizontal actor will look at the international dimension. So that's 1st of May. On the 22nd of May, we will organize online only webinar on ESPR as a whole. So DPP is just one part. That will not be stressed because on the 11th of June, we have a marathon like this organized by the commission on the most important urgent topics that are coming up. So the topics coming up like the delegated acts. And each session, I mean, we'll have a topics, and so there'll be sessions. Each session will have a discussion paper that will be prepared and will be sent to you one month before. So we will introduce a topic, create a framework for a discussion paper, and send it one month before for consultations for you to fill in what you would like to see to be discussed in that session and what you would like to contribute with. So 11th of June. Before that, an important date for you to recall, on the first, or 6th to 9th of June, there is European elections. <laughs> And we want that they actually do not, you know, the, you know, surprise us in a way. So they are DPP relevant as well, okay? <laughs> so European elections, do vote. Um, after 11th of June, there is no other date as a, so from 11th of June, we'll see what's next as a meeting, but be aware that in July and in September, we will have a new commission and new parliament. That means that we will see what are, will be the resources given to launch the delegated acts, what will be the momentum to continue, and what kind of support the Commission and Parliament will give to this endeavor. Huh? So this is just to give you, between now and summertime, what's happening. We will meet you, I guess, on the 11th. On 22nd, you can go and see the bigger picture, because DPP is the information kind of a carrier to support the regulatory compliance with respect to ESPR. Thanks again to all of you.